Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the Kukuli Bushcraft channel. Okay, those of you who have been following the channel for a while might have seen this guy before. This is Billy. He's uh, Bill Nez 1123. So, yeah, a Finnish collar dax. So they've been making these things since the Middle Ages and uh, they stopped production in uh, round about the late 70s, early 80s. And uh, throughout the 20th century, there was two, ma two main brands. Uh, Bill Nas being one of them, Kalakoski the other. But yeah, you can tell this is one of the, the later models, not just by the name of the model, but also the shape of the pole. And also the epoxy in the top. So uh, I've got two new ones coming in the post today. So I'm keeping one, another one's going to a friend of mine, but yeah, let's open the package and see what we've got. In the start of the 20th century, Bill Naz and Kalikowski, they uh, standardised their designs. So these are two axes, very similar to the one I've just shown you. They're both Kalikowski and they're both number 12s. I don't really know that much more about them. Uh, I guess the condition isn't great because they, uh, they were very cheap. So you have to uh, look around to find these for a, for a reasonable price. But they made a lot of them. And uh, they made them well. They made them to last. And last they did. So you can still find them. Christmas. Okay, with these old axes, the handles can quite often be a bit loose. So you can uh, solve this by soaking them in linseed oil. And as if this doesn't work, You can just, yeah, <laughs> I'll explain a bit better when we've got the package open. So that's uh, that's very loose. The wedge is coming out. So to tighten them up, quite often all you need to do is bang the head down and then knock the wedge in. Uh, so the collar uh, it tapers towards the top and it flares out a little for the just the last part. And uh, any handle you put on these things. I guess I'm going to have to rehandle one one day. I'm dreading it. <laughs> but it has to fit perfectly. And with you having a bigger area, you've, you've got a lot of friction holding the head on. Uh, yeah, that wedge can come out and be re-glued. Already, it feels quite solid just from pushing the wedge in a bit with my finger. But this is a uh, Kalikowski 12.3. So the 12 series was the most popular. And I believe they stopped making them in the 1970s. Uh, uh, Bill Nas, that is. I think Kalikowski had already... <laughs> I, th I think the, the name already didn't exist. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at the other one. I believe they're the same. I believe they're the same. A 
again the head's loose again a little tap and it's nearly the the edge looks the, the edge looks pretty good on that there's no serious chipping uh, Yeah, let's get a bit more light on these. The number 12, or the Kemi model, came in three different sizes. The 12-1 being the biggest, then the 12-2, these are the 12-3. So these should weigh round about 1.1 kilograms. And uh, you can see there the shape of the pole. Let's compare that to the, to the newer Bill Nas. See, it's very different. So the poles on these old ones are very often quite mashed up. So that's just want, going to want tidying up a bit with a grinder. There's a little bit of a chip in that one, but nothing serious. Yeah. So the reason these models were so popular is yeah the, the size and the weight I think uh, yeah so that just fits up to me under me armpit there in me hand so that's perfect size for me another thing you hear people say is if you hold it like that it should just touch the ground uh, I think that might be quite good for, for safety but I think for yeah, I, I prefer them just a little bit shorter, but any shorter than this, you can't really get a good two-handed swing, I feel. And as for the weight, you know, a weight like this, you can you can do quite a bit of chopping with this before you get tired. And, uh, yeah, size and weight for a multi-purpose general axe, which is what these were. Uh, if you wanted a felling axe, you get a... You get a number one, uh, substantially heavier, uh, but for just around the around the firewood shed, uh, for around the farm, these were these were ideal, which is why there's so many of them. I've obviously not used these yet, but this this works pretty good. I did a video comparing this to uh, to a more modern Holtz Brooks axe, and uh, yeah, same size handle. I think this performed a, l a little bit better on a few tasks and I think it was mostly down to the weight. But what I have found with this that quite surprised me is I've actually used this for, for spoon carving. And yeah, for, for delicate things, it's really quite surprisingly good. Uh, I generally prefer a shorter axe for, for carving and for, for delicate work and for real work something like this or maybe a little bit bigger but as if I'm working in the woods and I'm walking around I'm thinning a few trees out I mean this is this is enough weight to carry around you know so yeah nice axes yeah looking forward to getting one of these cleaned up a little <laughs> my head feels really tight now <laughs> that was a very easy fix. Yeah, uh, that can be fixed better than that. These axes, they're probably from the 1960s, at the very latest. So from about 1900 to uh, the early 70s is when these were produced. So yeah, it's great to get something something so old that's in good condition that's also had a lot of heavy use you know uh, well thank you very much for watching everyone and uh, please join me again soon for another Cookley bushcraft video and please like and subscribe if you haven't already bye for now